Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. As you can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about my piercings. By no means am I an expert on piercings, but I do have experience with a few different kinds of piercings, so I thought I would share my experiences and answer some of your questions. So at the moment, I only have four piercings in, but I have had seven altogether. I have both my lobes pierced currently, um, as well as a septum piercing and a lip piercing in the center of my face. My other three piercings, which I've since had to take out, were another two lobe piercings on my right ear and one other lobe piercing on my left. I had to take them out not because they got infected but because they just never healed. So I'm going to go through like my piercing history and the order that I got my piercings in and I'm going to answer the relevant questions along the way. So I didn't actually get my first piercings until I was 20 I believe and that was my first two lobe piercings. It was a really kind of spur of the moment thing. I'd only been thinking about it for like two weeks. I was actually really against getting myself pierced up until about a month before this point and then suddenly my mind completely changed. So I got those done I think in February of 2014. Then in the September of 2014 I got my lobes pierced for a second time. These are pretty unexciting piercings. I don't remember the pain being an issue, there wasn't much. I mean it hurts but you're putting a needle through your ear so that's sort of to be expected. My second lobe piercings I got pierced at the same place and I don't think I cleaned them once. They didn't get infected as I said but they just never healed and they ended up with sort of bumps around the side where the piercings were. They have since gone since I have taken the piercings out but they ended up getting really irritated and annoying so I probably should have cleaned them better but I also have really small ears and therefore small earlobes so I think maybe things were a little bit too crowded perhaps. My third piercing and the one that I get asked the most questions about was my septum piercing that I got done in February of 2015 so I've had it for just over two years now. Two of the questions that I get asked the most about the septum piercing is did it hurt and how much did it hurt? Yes it hurt and Honestly, at the time I would have said it was the second worst pain I'd ever experienced, but the thing is, it was super, super fast. The only pain you experience is as the needle goes through your nose, and then there's a little bit more pain when the jewelry goes in, but that's really it. Immediately after I got it done, I remember saying that I would not do it again purely because of the pain. Looking back now, I probably would do it again because I can't remember exactly how much it hurt, but Clearly it hurt quite a lot for me to say that. A question that I get a lot from people, normally random people who I either meet on a night out or literally meet in town when I'm walking around, is that they don't know if they should get one or whether it would suit them. This is something I thought about a little bit. I honestly hated septum piercings until two weeks before I got mine done. So I don't know what happens with me and piercings. I hate them and then my mind completely does a 180 and then I end up getting one. Something I say to everyone who tells me that they're not quite sure whether they want to get a certain piercing or not is to go for it. If you're concerned about the pain, you're gonna have to get over that. It's gonna hurt. You're putting a needle through your face. You're gonna have to deal with that. If you're really that bothered, you shouldn't be getting pissed. But if it's just about how things look, I would honestly say go for it because they're temporary things. You can take them out and nobody will ever know that you had it, especially if you take it out immediately afterwards. So after I said I was never gonna get any piercings, got my ears pierced, I then retracted that statement and said I was just never gonna get any facial piercings. Obviously, that changed when I got my septum piercing, but my justification for getting that facial piercing was because it could be hidden. It does depend what sort of jewellery you're wearing in your septum piercing, but if you wear a curved barbell like I am now, so it's kind of a horseshoe shape with two balls or whatever on the end, you can flip it up into your nose so it's completely hidden for work. I did it for my graduation, I did it when I went to see my grandparents the first few times after I got it done. I just think it's a really nice characteristic of the septum piercing, especially if you're concerned about people seeing it. The piercer who did my septum piercing would not let me leave the piercing place until he knew that I was able to flip it up. He said it was kind of mandatory and I was really happy about that. If you've got a good piercer, I believe mine was a very very good piercer, they will make sure that the jewellery that they pierce you with is wide enough to be flipped up. I watched one girl's video and she said that she couldn't flip up her jewellery because the ends were too close to each other to go past um, the outside of her septum. I sort of struggle with this uh, barbell as it's just a little bit too small but you can push it up. The one I was pierced with was much wider to allow for any swelling, which I don't think I had, but he widened it to make sure that it would definitely flip up with no problem. 
So if you want to be able to flip up your septum piercing, definitely talk to your piercer about that and they will definitely be able to accommodate it. If they can't, they don't know what they're doing, go somewhere else. <laughs> Another question I got was, is there a way to correct a septum piercing that heals lopsided without re-piercing, even with recommended aftercare? And this one's kind of a tough one and I want to be able to say there's a magic method that'll fix it, but by the sounds of things, I don't think there is a way without re-piercing it. If you think it's lopsided and you've just had it done, I've heard that there are ways where you can like use floss and move it or stuff your nose with tissue paper to push it forwards or backwards or whatever you need it to do. But if it's healed, I mean, it's stuck the way it is really. If you've cared for it well, that's great. That's a really good start, especially if you would need to get it re-pierced. But honestly, if a piercing has healed lopsidedly, I would say that's less a reflection of how you've been looking after it and more of a reflection of poor piercing technique by whoever did it. I would say this is something you need to address as soon as possible after it's pierced. Preferably as soon as they show you the piercing, you can go, that's not okay. So unfortunately, if it has healed, I would probably say it needs to be re-pierced again. So I found my septum piercing was one of the easiest piercings for me to deal with. Um, I mentioned that it really, really hurt when I got it done, but the pain was over in an instant. After that, I didn't really feel anything unless I bumped my nose, in which case the pain was sort of like, a bruise pain that radiated up into my face and it was really really painful so try not to knock your nose as this was a facial piercing I was really really strict with my cleaning again I always go to the same place that did my septum and my lip piercing as I really really trust them and they have this solution that I think costs like two or three pounds it wasn't expensive at all and you just clean the inside of your nose where the septum piercing is and I was told to do that for 12 weeks before I changed the jewelry I thought I knew better after three weeks I was pretty convinced that my septum piercing was healed there was no pain whatsoever when I moved it or if I touched my nose there was no pain whatsoever so I went ahead and changed the jewelry myself and I went from a slightly wider curved barbell to this exact barbell but I haven't changed it since so three weeks after I got it pierced I against the advice of my piercer went ahead and changed it but I've had absolutely no problems I think I kept up the cleaning a little bit longer after I'd changed the jewellery but I had no other issues after that and it was actually one of the easiest piercings I've ever had to deal with. So after I got my septum piercing in the September of 2015 I got my third piercing on my right lobe and it was actually barely on my lobe. I've got very small ears as I said and it was basically touching the cartilage and from day one the bar that was put in uh, rubbed on the cartilage and it never healed properly and was always a little bit irritating so that came out I think just before Christmas of last year. In the December of 2015, I got my most recent piercing, so I haven't had anything else since, and that was my lip piercing. I got this done at the same place as I got my septum piercing done, as I really, really wanted somebody who knew what they were doing, and I felt super at ease and in really capable hands when I got my septum piercing done, so I went back to the same place. I actually saw a different guy, but it was the same um, establishment, and I had another really, really good experience. This one hurt more than I was expecting it to, but again, it wasn't like unbearable and after I got it done I didn't really experience a huge amount of pain the day after I got it done my lip was pretty swollen I'll see if I can find a picture but if not you'll just have to believe me that my lip was very very swollen but that's to be expected but I think the sort of wounds within your mouth heal pretty quickly and I didn't really have any issues in terms of the healing again I was cleaning using the solution on the outside and then a salt water solution every so often on the inside while I would say this piercing was done successfully and I looked after it successfully and I still really love it, it was less problem free than my septum piercing. The worst thing about this piercing is definitely, definitely, definitely the interaction it has with your teeth. So I was pierced with a flat back barbell so it doesn't sort of irritate your gums too much. However, I found myself accidentally biting down on this and even sort of chewing on it out of like nervous habit and it irritated this tooth in particular, my right front tooth. I have worn away a little layer of that tooth. I didn't like the stud at all and I was told after 12 weeks to come back and they would change the jewellery for me. So I did wait out the full 12 weeks this time. I didn't go about changing things myself beforehand. I really wanted to be doing the right thing with this piercing. So I went back after 12 weeks, he checked everything, said everything looked really good and so he changed it to a curved barbell. This was better. I didn't bite down on it by accident so much but out of nervous habit I still did chew on it and it still did wear at my teeth. I really liked the look of that barbell but it wasn't that practical in the end. That was the look I really wanted to go for and I was really trying to avoid having to have a circular barbell but in the end I decided that my teeth were important enough to me that 
I wanted to find a jewellery that I could use in my lip piercing that I didn't keep biting down on and ruining my teeth with. I then did try a circular barbell like the one you can see now. At this point I was basically going to see how this jewellery would work and if it was any better I'd keep it and if it wasn't I was going to retire the lip piercing altogether. However this jewellery was really successful and I don't ever accidentally bite down on this at all. Um, I still play with it out of nervous habit but it's by no means as bad as either the curved barbell or the uh, original flat back stud. So I've had this particular jewellery in or this style of jewellery for probably about seven or eight months now and it's definitely what I'm going to be sticking with. I say this particular type of jewellery because unlike the septum piercing where I've had this exact same jewellery in for over two years, this is far less reliable because I'm sort of chewing on it and playing with it a lot. The ball falls out a lot. A lot of the time you'll just catch it and you can put it back in no problem but I've had plenty of occasions where I've been on a night out or in the street and it's fallen out and it's gone. <laughs> so I would say that is not a major problem but it's probably the biggest annoyance I have with this particular piercing. So that's all the piercings I have. I also got some questions about piercings in general. Am I planning to get any more piercings? Not definitely at this point. There are others that I would quite like. I have thought about getting an industrial which is a bar that just goes across the top of your ear like that. I actually went with my friend to get hers done when I got my first ever piercings done and oh god she did not enjoy that experience and I've been told by some people that cartilage piercings don't hurt at all. I've been told by other people that they are the worst. You know everybody's pain thresholds and pain tolerances are totally different so I think it's totally down to you. I'm not immediately thinking about getting an industrial anymore. I would like to get a nose piercing. Ideally I would like two hoops on this side of my nose. I really like how two rings on one side looks. Um, my boyfriend is less keen on that than I would like. So it's not something I'm immediately thinking about, but it is a potential for the future. I did forget to mention what jewelry I was wearing in my ears. On my right side, I'm wearing a sort of fake plug um, in the shape of a star, which I quite like, um, but it's a fake plug in the sense that it's only got the gauge of like a regular stud, but it's got a back to it that sort of makes it look like a plug. And on this side, I actually do have a taper in it. I've been, I say structuring my ear, I've been structuring my ear since, it's coming up to a year now, but I don't want like a big, Gauge. This, I think this is probably maximum four millimeters. Like it's no bigger than four millimeters. I think the biggest I would go is six. But yes, yeah, so I've got a taper in this ear, which is actually really easy to maintain and deal with. And I love it, um, but I'm not planning on like stretching it to a huge size. Another question I got was, have I had any bad experiences with piercings? Um, not especially. I've only ever got my piercings done at two separate places. At one place is where I got all my lobe piercings done and the other place is where I got my facial piercings done. And there were some quite significant differences between the two. I'm not going to give names of the one that I'm not going to recommend. Basically they are sort of a chain, a brand. They specialise in piercings and tattoos and it's a business and it's a big commercial thing. It might just be a coincidence but apart from my first lobe piercings, the three other piercings I got there I ended up retiring. As I said I've taken them all out because they never healed properly. Maybe that's my fault, maybe it's a coincidence, or maybe it's down to piercing that was less than good. They didn't use piercing guns, if they used a piercing gun I would have run the hell away. Please don't ever use a piercing gun. It's dreadful for you. If it's not a needle, get the hell out. But I generally just had less of a good experience at this particular place. I got both these piercings done at a tattoo shop called Lucky Black, which is in Southampton where I'm at uni. They have been absolutely amazing. I have heard so many recommendations about them for both tattoo and piercings from so many different people. They don't have a huge sort of internet presence so a lot of their custom comes from word of mouth and recommendations on the street which is really awesome and it's great that that place is surviving because they're obviously so good people know to go to them. I had my piercings done by two different guys. The guy who did my septum piercing, I was really nervous about getting it done and he was so good at sitting me down. We had a chat for like 20 minutes. I didn't feel like I was going to be rushed out. I didn't feel like there was a queue behind me. I was the only person there and he sat with me and he talked about the piercing and he made sure I was absolutely fine and when we did it I was totally happy to have him stick this thing through my nose I knew what I was getting myself in for. The same thing happened with my lip piercing I didn't feel like I was just sort of another job for them to do I was a customer they really appreciated me being there you know and I spent more time there and I bought more things from them as a result of that basically my only bad experiences 
have been where I've been treated as more of a job rather than a customer, I suppose. But I would 1 million percent recommend Lucky Black for anybody getting piercing. Other than that, I don't really think I've had any bad experiences. The final question I got is, what general advice can you give about piercings? There's a few things I could say. Firstly, about the place that you're getting it done. Please go somewhere reputable, somewhere where you can see sort of qualifications and to know that the staff there are certified to do it. Please don't do it yourself at home. It's just not going to end well. And even if it does go well, you're lucky. <laughs> Congratulations. I can't think of anywhere except like Claire's accessories that would pierce you with a gun. But if you go somewhere to get a piercing done and they bring out a piercing gun, so anything that's not basically a needle that's probably like this big with like a green bit on the end that's totally sterile, get out. They're so bad for you. The whole point of a piercing needle is that it actually gouges out a tiny, tiny part of your skin so it's not stretching anything. If you're putting it through cartilage, it won't shatter your cartilage. Please just don't use them. I know a lot of people do and they don't worry, but if you really want to get the best experience out of a piercing, don't use a gun. The only other piece of advice that I really strongly recommend is to keep your piercings clean. I was really bad with some of my low piercings and I wouldn't be surprised if that's why I had less of a good experience with them and had to take some of them out, but it definitely pays off, particularly with these two piercings, I definitely saw the benefits of regimented cleaning. If you can find a good solution, I know that there are a few around. People will tell you different things and different ways to clean your piercings. If you can find solutions that are um, alcohol free so they don't dry out your piercings, check reviews and things like that. See what other people have said and see what other people recommend. The one that I used from Lucky Black, that might be something you can buy online I haven't checked, haven't needed to, but that's definitely something to look into. But anyway, I think that's everything I have to say about my piercings. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments below or on Twitter or on Instagram wherever you fancy reaching out to me I hope this has maybe helped you out given you a little bit more insight into getting different piercings Maybe helped you out with a decision you were wrestling with Please have fun with piercings They do need to be looked after properly and they can go really horribly wrong But if they're done in the right way they are great and I absolutely love my piercings I don't regret them one bit Thank you very much for watching this video I really hope you've enjoyed it Let me know if you have any other suggestions about videos you'd like me to do Take care of yourselves and I will see you in another video very very soon.